wanted me to say. Uh, well, this is one of my favorite things in Justin's room. It's a pillow. And in middle school, they give out pillows with the year of their high school graduation. Each student is asked to embroider in home ec class uh, on the other side of the pillow uh, their goal, which is really a neat idea because when they graduate, they can turn that pillow around and see if they realize their goal or not. And what was so bittersweet, the irony for us was uh, Justin didn't graduate from high school, but as you can see, his goal to get signed by a record company. into a kind of a musical being. He was drawn to musical things, uh, and very smart. Of course, you know, when you have a child, they're the greatest thing in the world. But uh, with Justin, he uh, showed signs early on that he was going to be musical. From a very young age, I, I think I would have to go back to when he, he was about two and a half, we were sitting in a concert hall and they were playing Ode to Joy on the piano. And tears were streaming down his cheek and he turned to me and he said, Mommy, um, that music is so beautiful. My heart is crying. He was born with this gift with music in his heart and to know from such a young age, he had this passion at such a young, young age. It was incredible to see, to watch and to hear. Well, he actually started playing piano uh, when he was six years old, but I gotta say before that, we had this little toy keyboard and he began to demonstrate some kind of interest and ability. Very good. Baseball that well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were we were really close as little kids. He was he was a great older brother to me. Have fun, Justin. Have fun. We would make our own radio shows together. I was thinking about that the other day. We would we spent so much time on it. We would pick all of these cassettes and just play them, and then do some narration in between. And now we're to our sponsors. Hi. Justin, I'm just telling you to get soapy soap. We, we, yeah, we had a lot of fun together. <laughs> There's another fun and exciting video. Now for our commercial break. I remember when he was um, gravitating toward venues with mosh pits, um, totally different style of music. It was almost as if, I would have to say, um, going in line with what a young teen's hormones were doing at the time. Justin performed on the keyboard and sang, and he had black X's on the back of his hand. I said, what in the world is that, Justin? He said, it stands for straight edge. No, say no to drugs, no drugs, uh, at age 13. Justin's music evolved as he began working on his own. He created a project band called the Ivoryton Piano Factory. I used to sit on the steps going down to the basement without Justin knowing because he never wanted me to hear him, you know, working on a piece or um, finishing it up, I would have to hide and I would just listen on the staircase. I, it just, it blew me away every time. So come out, please. You've got nothing to you know, music was it. It kind of consumed us as it consumed him. And uh, he, uh, he brought uh, so much creativity uh, in a short amount of time. We'll never know where it 
what would have ended up. Well, it was first period on the first Monday of my senior year of high school, and my guidance counselor pulled me out of class. And she told me in the hallway, and I just didn't under, I didn't understand what she was saying. It's, it's like I blacked it out. I couldn't hear. I don't remember a lot of that day. Most of it is blurry. I can really only describe it as a shock. It was a, a surprising, almost lack of emotion because of how, how confusing, how sudden something like that was. Like I didn't even have time to, to really react. It was almost like a dream. I remember it so clearly. My brother woke up to a phone call from a friend, and then he hung up. And I said, what happened? And he said, Justin OD'd. And I said, does that mean he died? And he said, yeah. That morning is surreal to me. Uh, and it was a, a man, I don't know how to describe the feeling, you know, the, the feeling of Justin being gone. And uh, parents' worst nightmare. He was going full, you know, full throttle um, until, you know, he got kind of sidetracked. And uh, this is a, a, he ran into a trap uh, that many kids are running into. In his junior year, early, he became um, different. Uh, he was kind of consumed by something we didn't understand. There weren't necessarily hints. I don't think, to me, like, he wasn't always talking about drugs or anything. Never would I have thought that Justin would be doing heroin. So I didn't, I didn't know. I think my friends, some friends knew. And I think when some friends realized that in other hours where Justin wasn't hanging out with us, that he was, he was with some people he shouldn't have been with, some really people who were bad influences on him. I remember having like conversations with him, uh, you know, when he was kind of like hanging out with other people and hanging, you know, I'll admit I kind of uh, pulled away a little bit. If I had it my way, we would, you know, be playing music together and hanging out and stuff, but it just seemed like there were some other people in his life that he was whatever, uh, hanging out with. And uh, yeah, I guess the motives were, you know, for drugs. We were getting all these signals, and uh, we decided, uh, well, Justin, maybe you need some medication. Maybe there's something that we could do to help you. So we, we took him to a psychiatrist, but he also had a blood test. And uh, the blood test came back with a, a kind of a horrific message that he was in over his head in substances. And the uh, doctor told us, you have to have him hospitalized. So it was that time that we made a decision that he would go to a treatment center. And so he spent a month there, and we went to visit him every weekend. You know, we just thought we had to do it. It was something, it was, it was about life and death for us. Very difficult. Uh, he came home uh, much better, much healthier. We thought we had a handle on it. It turns out it's bigger than us, as it is with many people. Obviously, we were cut short. Um, 
he didn't have the opportunity to be appreciated in his own, you know, time. And that was tough for me now to uh, understand. I'm sorry. It gets me uh, every time. I wish he had known how good he was. When you lose someone and um, they're gone, their memory can fade very quickly. He left this tremendous legacy of his work um, in, a, in a state of, of some of it being finished, some of it unfinished. Uh, it's everywhere. It's scattered about, but the finished work that he had, I knew, was worthy of a record and had to be shared with the world. I was trying to get into his computer to find all of the music that I could find, scraps of it here and there, this and that, um, and find more finished works or whatever there was. Somewhere during the process, uh, his computer crashed. I went to his backup drive and I found more things. I discovered a track. I discovered a song, Whispering Spirits. It was totally finished. I was amazed. Mixed, mixed perfectly. All the tracks, all the voices, all done right here in the basement. A smile spreads across my face. his inspiration you know with us and whispering spirits was a very important song to me and that to me was his gift to me because uh, I didn't know that song existed uh, in its completed state until I until after he died and it was an amazing uh, recording and I had a feeling he worked so hard on that song but why didn't he share it at the time I have a feeling that he might have, you know, expected me to have it after he died, whenever that might be. But uh, that's probably not true. But you know, if I think of it that way, that's okay. We didn't know what to do with his music, but we knew that we had now six beautiful finished tracks. Not enough for an album. Uh, the album that Justin dreamed about. I said, I've got to reach out to the people that Justin admired. I went to great lengths to try to reach out to Mike Kinsella in Chicago. I knew him only as Owen. I didn't even know his name. I sent an email. I said, this is what happened to our son. Uh, you know, it's a sad story, but we're looking for people to cover some of his songs. It wasn't 24 hours before Mike Kinsella sent me an email. He said, yes. He said, I heard the story. It moved me. I'm so sorry to hear about your son. I love his music. I would love to cover one of his songs. In fact, I want to cover ESRT, page 14. He picked one of the songs out. He thought it was uh, just right for him. You know, it's a little droney and the melody and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I could actually see myself you know, working a version of this. But yeah, it feels good to do something kind of good. Like, I think of myself, you know, like at 17, like all the things that I end up doing after that, you know, and it's heartbreaking. 
Uh, it wasn't long after we reached out to Mike, I got a message, an email out of the blue from a group in Toronto, Canada called Boys Night Out. I would have never known that Boys Night Out had been one of Justin's favorite groups. They offered to cover one of Justin's songs, uh, and guess what? They picked the same song that Mike Kinsella picked, that is ESRT page 14. Something about that song seems to latch on to people as a vehicle, uh, because it only has one line of lyric. And I can't stay away, because you're a radio wave, and you always seem to be transmitting to my brain. What a lyric. It really jumps out and grabs you, and uh, these groups uh, kind of pay tribute to that line. A few weeks later, up pops a picture on Justin's MySpace music page. A young Englishman named Ollie. And there it is. The entire lyrics to ESRT page 14 tattooed on his ribcage. I was amazed. And uh, not only that it was real, that it really happened, I had to get in touch with Ollie. He loved his music, but he also said that he had had some problems in his own life, and he said, I had the tattoo, so it would remind me to take better care of myself. And I told Ollie, I think you have a guardian angel in Justin. I think it's an amazing testament of the power that one young person can have on others. And I can't stay away Cause you're a radio wave And you always seem to be transmitting to my brain And I can't stay So here we go, we've got two groups now, and I thought, wow, I can't, go, I can't go very far without reaching out to Greg Dunn, who created the band Moving Mountains. Justin had really, really admired Greg Dunn, and uh, he loved the idea, and he offered right away to jump on board. I knew Justin through our sort of Westchester scene of music. It certainly caught me by surprise how talented he was. Um, I mean, we were all in sort of hardcore <laughs> ska metal bands or whatever, and, and Justin was sort of writing these like lush, you know, piano, multi-instrumental songs. And so I kind of chose the one song that I thought would be the hardest one to do. It, it was almost weird in a way because I felt like his songs were kind of perfect as they were, because there's no point in trying to redo something Justin did that he did so well. Thank you. 
we were trying to figure out how we could get this album distributed. It's one thing to record an album. Uh, it's another thing to get it out there. I uh, sent an email to Mike Kinsella, who uh, has his music uh, as Owen, distributed by Polyvinyl Records. He said, well, wouldn't hurt to send them an email, see you know if they'd be interested in distributing the CD. Didn't take too long. I heard back from them and they said, we'll do it. And it's a direct reflection of Justin's legacy. And uh, it's amazing to us that he realized his goal. He may not have graduated from high school, but he realized his goal. get together with the kids, we put them in touch with mentors that they can reach out to in the future to get advice. They go away with more than just the experience, and it's a beautiful thing. You're watching News 12, I'm Janelle Burrell. Well, some very talented musicians from our area got their taste of the big time in White Plains today. A chance to share the stage with a Yankee legend all to honor one special man. This ball is hit high, it deep to left field. From the baseball diamond in the Bronx to the stage in Westchester, it's quite a journey for Yankee turn recording artist Bernie Williams. On this night, he performed at the White Plains Performing Arts Center with some very gifted musicians, all due to the efforts of the Justin Veach Fund. Well, since I have this uh, great passion for music and uh, have been through all my life, you know, I, I, I think it, I thought it was fitting for me to to get involved in this and uh, try to make uh, this happen for for the uh, for the fund. <laughs> Certainly a great event. And we should tell you, Justin Beach's father travels to schools all around the region with his presentation, A Message from Justin, which educates teens on the dangers of drugs. I found a lot of positives, creating something good out of something bad. And it's the only thing that keeps me going, honestly. Uh, if I didn't have that feeling to create some good, then life would be difficult. I think it's incredible what Jeff has done. It's something that Jeff will do for the rest of his life. Um, he'll never let Justin down with this. So my life has changed. That's why I'm here today. I've been speaking with literally thousands of kids. And uh, I mean, I'm very thankful that he left something so important. But the powerful message that Justin left, here he is, 17 years old, through me now, he's talking to you. And I'm hoping that through you now, you're delivering his message to take better care of yourself and be alert to take care of your friends. Thank you. It's very therapeutic for me to do this. Um, and uh, am I being uh, egotistical? Am I being, um, am, I tr am I taking advantage of our tragedy to, to reach out to other people? Um, um, no, I firmly believe no, because what I'm trying to do is draw attention to it. And in doing so, in being the vehicle uh, to do that, um, it's painful at times for me but it is making something good happen out of a tragedy. It's also making me feel better that I'm doing something now. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a sense of helplessness that, well, it's too late, we can't do anything about it. Uh, what can we do? Well, we can, we can withdraw from society and mourn, but 
To me, that's not good enough. They had a life. Look back at the good times. Look back at the beautiful things that you can smile about. And I, try, I like to go back through Justin's 17 years and think about the good things. There's a tendency to think about just what happened and the loss, but there's so much there. And Justin, he was able to accomplish more in 17 years than some people might accomplish in a lifetime.